One of the biggest challenges that we face in providing service in rural communities is the fact that just because people live in a rural community doesn't mean that they don't have the same bandwidth consumption desires and needs that people do in uh, urban markets. So the expectation of the rural customer is very similar to the expectation of the urban customer. And so trying to meet that need with all of the barriers that we face with uh, distance and technology and terrain and density issues, it's pretty challenging. Distance is the final frontier. We have to do some very creative things to provide services uh, into communities that mainly are overlooked by the incumbent uh, communications companies. For a tier three provider, one of the big challenges that we face is the fact that the big equipment providers, the folks who, who provide the stuff that makes all of this work, they don't really pay attention to us. In our relationship with Huawei, you actually get not only the pre-sales support, but you get the after-sales support that we really are looking for. And so it was actually an awakening process to actually find out that there was a a high quality uh, vendor that was providing this service and it was refreshing to to find out that it was not new but it's perhaps new to the U.S. The big win is fiber to the home here in the more dense markets and we're actively doing that now with Huawei and uh, and I think that's the end game because it's it's scalable beyond what we can conceive today and so we're able to right now for a lot of customers in this area both business and residential we can we can bring them gigabit service and they like it in order for me to really understand what they were all about, I needed to I needed to learn more about Huawei. And so I had an opportunity as part of this advisory board to go to China and actually visit their global headquarters in Shenzhen and their uh, their main research and development center in Beijing. And it was it was astounding to say the least. So it's more than seventy thousand engineers doing research and development. There's not a U.S. based company that comes close to that kind of research and development capability. And so uh, I actually became a part of this advisory board that, that met with them in their, uh, their corporate headquarters in Plano and their executive team, U.S. executive team spent two days completely focused on what our needs are. Not trying to sell us anything, but just asking questions, trying to understand the tier three market, the unique needs that, that we, we have and the, the way that we move quicker than the tier one market. Getting to see all the people that are involved and they took time to actually listen to what our needs were. There were vice presidents that were in that, in a private meeting with us that actually took time to not only hear what we had to say, but they were taking notes. This was one of those defining moments for me. Uh, none, of, none of the staff, none of the executives, none of the staff from, uh, from Huawei had their cell phones with them. They were completely focused on the six CEOs from tier three markets, except for Ha Ming, the president of Huawei US. And he had a cell phone, he, it rang one time. And he stood up, and we all paused, he stood up, and he said, I'm in a very important meeting, I'll call you back. And put his phone down, and then sat down and paid attention to us. Being a multinational company, uh, it was actually surprising to get the level of service that, that we got. Huawei is in 60 of the top 65 telecoms in the world. They've got 170,000 employees. And their technology services a third of the world's population. Imagine how exciting that must be for a tier three CEO to say, these folks actually want to do business with me. And so that's how we got started and that's where we are today. And I think it's a remarkable story. We further went on to uh, get involved with Huawei and to evaluate their products in house and we were actually assigned a engineer and a dedicated account rep that actually cared about what we had to say and what our needs were. I've struggled, I've wanted to do a fiber to the home deployment for years and I've been in this business a long time. So in order to justify a fiber to the home build, it's gotta make sense financially. It's not just because it's the coolest thing out there or it's the most sustainable technology. It has to, it has to pay for itself. 
So Huawei comes along and, and, uh, and they said, well, test this, this gear, just try it out and see what you think. So I get my technical department to actually play with one of the G-Pon boxes and they come back and they go, oh my gosh, this stuff is actually more capable than the competition, the stuff that we were looking at. And, and we were looking at the three top vendors in the US for g -Pon. So suddenly, the, the business case worked. It was, a, it was a no brainer to build a fiber to the home project in the Hermiston area. And this is the first place that we're doing this. What's refreshing about Huawei is, is that it's not just about fiber optics. It's, it's about a portfolio of products. Having a relationship with Huawei helps us to, to have a single point of contact from an engineering perspective that we can consult with and, and then they can lay out the portfolio as their products fit your application. So that means that as a company, I can invest in fiber optics and serve today's generation of customers, but without forklifting that whole network and, and redoing the capital expense that's involved, it allows me to, to know that with a change in optics, I can provide the next level of services up to 40 gig, and that's just today. That's a partnership that there's gonna be a future, not only for the current relationship, but for five, 10 years down the road. The thing that I value most about Huawei, uh, all of the gear is great, all the scalability is great, the future is great, but the thing that I value the most about Huawei is the relationship. Huawei does a great job at building a healthy relationship uh, with companies like Eastern Oregon Telecom. I look forward to the future with Huawei. I look forward to continuing that relationship probably through the rest of my career.